Welcome to another dope episode of Candy Fresh. I'm your host, Anahita. And I'm Kalik, and tonight we're at the Moxie Hotel here in Uptown. We are so excited to have you. We are not only featuring an amazing audience, we have a fantastic lineup of movers and shakers doing crazy cool work here in the Twin Cities, because obviously it's Black History Month, so you don't want to go anywhere. We got an amazing audience here. How are you guys doing, audience? Yeah. <laughs> We got DJ Mickey Breeze on the ones and twos. How you doing, Mickey Breeze? Kalik, who do we have on the roster tonight? All right, we got a dope lineup tonight. We got Jonathan Bad Boy Gibson, a celebrity hairstylist and brand consultant. And after that, we got Parker XL, who is an amazing lifestyle influencer and fashion coach. Ooh, that's a good start. We also had the love engineer herself. Alex Merritt is here to chat up with Storm with us tonight. We have artist and muralist Reggie LaFleur, who actually has some awesome artwork here at the Moxie. And we can't have a show without some music. We got female hip-hop artist The Lioness chatting and performing for us tonight. All right, so you guys stand up, and uh, we're going to have a great time tonight at the Moxie Hotel. We're going to turn it up a notch, so you guys are here watching another dope episode of Candy Fresh. to Candy Fresh, we have our amazing first guest tonight. She goes by the name of Alex Merritt, but she is a love engineer? How in the world do you connect your background with engineering and love and a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm going to ask you about? But ladies and gentlemen, welcome Alex Merritt here tonight. Thank you. How you doing, lovely? I am well. How are you? I'm doing great. It is an honor and privilege to be chatting with you. I'm a fan, but you didn't know it until we met tonight. 
Some people call that creepy, but I think it's great. I think it's wonderful. Thank you. Girl, so you are a love engineer. Let's just go right into that. How did you even coin that label? What does that mean? You know, it's funny. My background is engineering, so I'm a mechanical engineer by degree, and I would like to take credit for it, but I didn't. Someone gave me that name uh, when I was explaining to them what I did, and he's like, how'd you get into this? Are you a psychologist? I was like, no, I'm an engineer. And he's like, like a love engineer? And I was like, yes, like a love engineer. Wonderful. So what does that actually entail? So it's taking the principles that I did learn in engineering school. So this ability to solve complex problems, that's what engineers do, period. And love and relationships is as complex as it gets. And so, right. <laughs> so I've taken that same approach instead of the like, oh, it's all artsy and wonderful, but wanted to figure out, I'm like, what's the cause and effect? And that's the thing that we learned in engineering school is that for every effect, there is a cause. Yes. And so I look at love and relationships in the same way, trying to understand and break down what is the cause and effect in relationships that either help them be amazing or help them be awful. And relationships are far more than just romantic. You're also talking about friendships, you're talking about relationships with um, work co-workers, but you focus on love, correct? Yes, I focus on intimate relationships. She's like the female version of Hitch, except <laughs> a little bit more technical. Very technical. I just watched that last night. It's fresh on my mind. So let's talk a little bit more about what, how you do what you do. Do you meet with people? Is it um, online? Talk more aspects of that. So I have a couple of ways I do it. So first is through dessert and discussion, which is a live experience. So I bring men and women together to talk about love, sex, and relationships over dessert and drinks. Ooh, that doesn't sound terrible at all. It's fantastic, right? Because right now the only way, or I should say the only way, one of the key or main ways we build relationship skills, and that's my focus, is on helping us build relationship skills. Um, getting together is easy. Um, staying together, not so much. But if you have some skills, you're better positioned to succeed in love and relationships. And so I bring men and women together together to help us build skills, but in a non-pressure, super fun environment. Because right now it's either premarital counseling yep. or pre-divorce counseling, as I call it. Both of those are too late for you to learn skills for how to do relationships. And that's a fun way to kind of break the ice too. When you're talking about all those categories all at once and over, you know, dessert and probably some cocktails. And some drinks. And and drinks. some drinks. Things are always better with drinks and dessert. Real quick, what is your favorite dessert? I don't have a favorite dessert, believe it or not. I just like sweets in Ooh, general. My so girl, my girl. I am, I'm one who eats anything, but if I had to pick anything, it'd be ice cream. Can never go wrong with ice cream. <laughs> so you have a uh, yearly events. Oh no, you have multiple events per year. Mm -hmm. So how can we find out how to be a part of it? How to refer a friend? Where do we get all your information from? So all of my information is at dessertanddiscussion.com. So that's D-E-S-S-E-R-T and A-N-D, discussion, D-I-S-C-U-S-S-I-O-N dot com. We're not playing games, but speaking of games, mm. you actually created a game. I did. The War on Love. Yes. What the is this love. game? So the War on Love, is, it's kind of a play on, on the concept of like, what's the War on Love? It's like a lack of communication. That is the war. And so the game is designed to help you win the War on Love by getting us a, giving us a fun way to start talking and to have real conversations about love, sex, and relationships. So it's a card game. It's a card game that you play like you play the game War. Wow. And... It's probably better with drinks, too. You can always add a, you know, make you it a You can do it again. sober as well. Um, I, you, I'm sensing a the theme here. No. <laughs> I'm just saying, in the moxie, you want to tip back a couple cocktails, relax, and also talk legit over desserts or whatever it is. Um, so where can people actually get your game? So the game is also on the website, so you can get it at dessertanddiscussion.com, the tab, the game. The game. So you got conversations, you got events, you got the game. You also do courses. I do. What are these courses? So again, for people who really want to go deeper in relationship skills, like I said, right now, for whatever reason, the most important aspect of our lives, which I have to believe are relationships, it's all trial and error. We would sign up in no other fashion for that kind of approach. And so the courses are designed to help us, again, understand gender dynamics, which is where my specialty lies, is understanding how and why men work very specifically and together to help us build great relationships. I love it. And you also have a book and merch? No, yeah. you got merch. <laughs> I have merch and I have, I'm a published author in other books as well. So I am just speaking things into existence <laughs> right now. All things, the love engineer, right. dessert and discussion are right. found at dessertanddiscussion.com. Before we go, is there anything else you just want the general audience to know about you? 
um, that I think relationships, like I said, are fundamentally the most important aspect of our lives. And my favorite quote about it is by the Persian poet Rumi, who says, your task is not to seek for love, but to seek within and remove all the barriers you've built against it. You deserve an amazing relationship, and you can have amazing relationships, and it can't be learned. Two fun facts for you. I am Persian, and my name means the goddess of love. So I think we're meant to be. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Alex Merritt for you. Thank you so much for joining us, my Thank dear. Thank you for having me. You are watching Candy Fresh. All right, so we got here before us Jonathan Bad Boy Gibson, celebrity hairstylist and beauty consultant. Man, thank you for coming here. I am truly grateful to be here. How you doing tonight? Blessed. I Blessed. feel so good. And well favored. So let's jump into this a little bit. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. So I'm a native. I'm born right here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I'm a celebrity hairstylist. Um, I've graced the, the runways of New York City, and I'm now styling stylist lead for... Uh, a lot of beauty brands here in Minneapolis. Doing your thing, I see. <laughs> so what I always try to understand is how do, how do people get their start? What was your, your, your first big break when it came to this? My first big break was the fashion industry. Um, an educator of mine brought me on a fashion show, and when I show up, I show up and I, I show out, you know? And you got to have an attitude of gratitude, and, you know, it just, it just, get, it just goes from there. I'm taking, I'm taking notes right now. <laughs> So when it comes to, you know, your influencers, I know there's a lot of different things that can influence your, your artwork and how you style people. How do you put your own mark on it? My own mark, it comes from within. You know, the, the passion that I have for hairstyling and networking, um, it's just, it just, it happens from within. You know, there's, there's a lot of people that I have, have gratitude for, for showing me how to show up in the industry. But um, for me, it all starts with, with gratitude. Absolutely. So I, I heard you say networking. Yes. And for me, networking has gotten me into a lot of opportunities that I may not have had unless I just introduced myself or was okay with learning. I've noticed like these days, a lot of people just want to do it themselves. <laughs> I'm like, what is it? Right. Like? So what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? So for me, I'm like, a, let's all get in. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love reaching back, you know, reaching back and, and Paying it forward is definitely how I um, continue to brand myself, you know. Um, reaching back and definitely uh, just going for it, you just know. Going for it. Yes. And that is part part of the problem. People don't know how to just do it. We'll just no. sit back and have too many moments of like, ah, oh, should I do like, <laughs> jump into it? <laughs> right. So when you said beauty consultant, how does that work? Beauty consultant for me, um, I just take a true analysis of skin, hair, body type, hair type, skin type, and I give my honest suggestions, mm -hmm. you know, and that's kind of how I do it, you know, and I suggest products that I believe in. Um, I, I look at the person's lifestyle, yeah. and I ask those questions that target their concerns. Okay. Now, and I appreciate the fact that you are honest. Sometimes <laughs> people need to, that's not for you, don't wear that. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> so what are some ways that we can catch up with you, and also do you have any events coming up in the near future? Yes, in the near future, I have a few fashion shows that I'm going to be style leading for. Um, and I also am booked for uh, Super Bowl 53 Ooh. in Atlanta. Yes. Shout out, yes. give it up, give it up. <laughs> yes, um, I will be leading some of the beauty companies that are affiliated with the NFL. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a really good connection. Um, yeah, so I got a lot of stuff going on, you know, just building my brand, website, everything. And networking. Yes, take networking. <laughs> <laughs> so if there was a younger you, I always want to ask these type of questions. If there was a younger you you can talk to, what would you tell that individual? Hmm. I would tell that individual to slow down mm. and, you know, go for what you, you love, you know, and show up with your heart and mind, you know, and just continue to just push through, push through and love who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's very important to have self-love. Because like they say, if you can't love yourself, you can't love nobody else. Hey, you ain't so. never lie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got one more last question for you. Absolutely. So what's been like really on my mind was, who was your favorite, your favorite person to style and why? 
there's been a lot of people that have been my favorite, but what sticks out to me most is Yvonne Orji. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a gospel kind of like, she's in the gospel realm and she's an actress and she's a comedian. Um, she was very fun to work with. She do it all. Yeah, she does it all and she's like an outgoing person and um, she let me do what I want with like hair color, hair styling, cutting. Um, she let me really be me, mm-hmm. you know, and bring her look to uh, the forefront. So it was it was an amazing opportunity to work with her. Um, I also like Snoop. You know, Snoop was really fun. I got to, over the Super Bowl weekend, I got to be his main stylist. Uncle um, Snoop? Yeah, and I got to style him and, you know, work, work with his dreadlocks and, and just give him, like, a really nice, cool, sleek look. Mm-hmm. And uh, it worked out, you know. You know, I might have to, uh, you know, hit Absolutely. you up on the UK, see what's up with all of that. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Yeah, well, I appreciate you sharing that with us, and um, you guys check them out. Once again, this is Jonathan Bad Boy Gibson. Where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Facebook uh, under Jonathan Bad Boy Gibson. You can find me on Instagram under Bad Boy 31. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks again, guys, and uh, tune in to Candy Fred. <laughs>
you know, what, 10 years ago, you know, we didn't think of the uh, concept of uh, selfies and being able to just use no, a phone didn't. to take <laughs> photos and stuff. And a lot of the, the cameras that we use on these phones are able to be referenced in, in everything here. So, you know, it's just, it's a lot of different ways. I've met people online, people come to my studio. Um, there's kind of just like just some projects that I do on the whim. Um, so the spectrum's kind of all over the place. So. All over, and you yeah. definitely all are over. Clearly, at the Moxie, you got a couple of couple of pieces of art. So y'all gonna have to come out to the Moxie and check this out. I can't, you know, give you all the secrets. You're gonna have to come <laughs> see his work. But where else can people in the in the Twin Cities see your work, whether it's outside or inside? Well, um, outside uh, we have the old Intermedia Arts Building. Uh, I believe it's on 26th in Lindale. Um, so I've done a few pieces, uh, one big collaborative piece with a bunch of other artists. Um, and then I did a big self-portrait of myself in purple. Um, and then I have a piece of uh, my friend Trippy Styles who does, you know, hair and, and that sort of thing. And so we collaborated and did that project. Um, and then I work with um, the folks at Made Here. Uh, it's a project that's done through Hennepin Theater Trust. It's downtown, uh, downtown Great Minneapolis. Amazing organization. And so I've been doing a lot of... Uh, artist advisory panel work with them and they've been you know affording some really awesome opportunities through that and then I got a few other projects uh, going on too that's kind of hush hush right now so it's hush hush you're gonna <laughs> have to follow along to Mr. Reggie and see what he's yeah. got going on you can't give all the secrets away you can't no, show no. everything all at no. once I got a question for you being an artist obviously has so many rewards it's extraordinarily gratifying I mean otherwise you wouldn't be doing something you hate uh, but what is something that's just an, a constant struggle an obstacle or something you're like man this is just I'm throwing in the towel do you ever have that feeling oh definitely so um, a lot of the um turmoil, you know, that I have as a visual artist is really dealing with, I guess, the concept of really putting your heart and soul into the project um, and then trying to balance that with, you know, quick commissions or work that gets you, you know, some decent money to kind of keep going, you know. And um, it took a while for me to really try to understand you know, what I need as an individual, yeah. you know, um, as opposed to catering to other people's needs. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I guess the main thing is just really, you know, with my work, I want to tell a story. And you can't tell a story with a lot of, like, commercial projects. Mm. You can't tell a story with, you know, a million people wanting you to do, like, pop culture pieces and sure. things like that. And that's how I started, but that's not how I want to end. So you got to so. keep the lights on which yeah. sometimes a little bit more struggle with yeah, trying yeah, to be yeah. creative, and then you have a total free reign. But important question is, what is your intent? What is your goal? Where do you see yourself? What do you want to do? Well, um, I want to do a lot of things, but I think the uh, main focus that I'd like to kind of work on this year is uh, kind of just dealing with the public art realm. Um, so I'm into just making large-scale murals and just being in that sort of I guess, environment to where I'm able to help change, you know, the dynamic of certain, you know, social settings and things like that. And uh, going back to intermedia arts and um, kind of just the surrounding areas in the uptown, you know, area, there's nothing like it. You know, there's nothing like that building. And um, I'd like to try to take that same energy and try to have that translate it to communities that really need it, you know. Um, and uh, I guess that's, I guess that's the, the, the sort of immediate goal that I have, is just working with public art and really trying to transform communities for the greater good. And I think you can tell such amazing, remarkable stories through your art. So much success to you. Keep doing Thank what you're so doing. Y'all don't go anywhere. You're watching Candy Fresh. Before we go, where can people find you? Well, my main website is ral86.com. That's spelled R-A-L-8-6. And then I'm on social media at ral86 on Instagram and Reggie LaFleur Artist page on Facebook. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Reggie LaFleur. Thank you for joining us. It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on. Get your shine on. Candy fresh, come show up, get your shine on. Welcome back, guys. Right now, we got Parker XL. He's a brand expert and lifestyle influencer. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Oh, I'm blessed and well-favored. 
it's hey, that's all you can ask for, right? I'm just trying to get fly like you though the whole time. You like, know, it's simple. I wish, I wish we had like a just, cam. Right, right. Just tune into parkerxl.com and they'll give you all the tips for life. Hey, <laughs> there we go. So, question for you: How did you get into fashion? How did that become a thing? I mean, I've always been into like fashion. It's just kind of been one of those things where I've always just been, you know, I guess just. I, I don't know. People would say fly. The, the coolest kid say on fly, the block. But, you know, always just kind of been an independent, just kind of always made my own image. Mm -hmm. Didn't follow the trends, didn't follow the fads and all that stuff. Um, half times I couldn't even fit the stuff in stores. So I would mm -hmm. always just kind of like go to the thrift store, remake my stuff. And it just kind of became a thing. Oh, man. Thrift store. That used to be a vibe for me, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I just got too tall and then nobody was donating stuff that was they my was size. Tall. Yeah, because they were like, keeping it. Yeah. <laughs> it's an investment. <laughs> man, so... What brought you to this point? Like, how did you, who did you network with? Where did you start? Yeah, well, so I started in the fashion scene and things like that. Um, and with school and life and stuff, I just got a lot of different opportunities um, doing styling. Mm. And it just kind of became a thing. Um, that was never necessarily my goal or my passion. Right. Um, my passion was always to make something great happen, you know, constantly be creative, constantly create con uh, amazing content mm -hmm. and always connecting people. And so that ended up segueing into doing a magazine um, called Fashion Arts Magazine. Okay. Um, and my friend and I, we ended up growing it, uh, building it, and then it became something. From there, other opportunities came with like red, red carpet corresponding okay. and things like that. I heard you did some work with uh, Candy yeah, Fresh yeah, in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I did. I, I hosted you guys red carpet a couple of times. Oh, lit. Yeah, yeah. So it was really, it was really exciting. Um, and then I ended up going towards more of my big boy job, my okay. big boy lifestyle. Okay. And me and my business partner, my um, old business partner, we started a business, uh, Parker and Reed, which was mm -hmm. a PR and creative branding company. Okay. So it's, you know, I have that, that ability to kind of bring in the art side of things, but also the business. Yeah. So my next question, how did you get into ownership? Because I know a lot of people are more of the worker mentality. Yeah. That's how we're kind of taught to work for another person. Yeah. How'd you get into it? I mean, I've always just been that person that cannot have a nine to five, but also I just, I'm too stubborn to work for somebody. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. I got too much, like, I'm just, I'm too, my ADHD kicks in. Right. I'd be like into a woman. And I'd be like, eh, not into it. You know what I mean? And it just became one of those things where, you know, with my, with my, my career that I do now and my business that I do, yeah. I'm able to constantly continuously reinvent it and constantly continuously reinvent brands and, and collaborations with mm -hmm. companies and things like that. So it made it so that I'm always excited about yeah. it. Always, you know, on the, you know, on the, on the point. New opportunities new always opportunities, coming yeah, up. Exactly. Exactly. So as of yet, who are, or who have been, the, the dopest people you've worked with so far? Um, you know, some of the dopest people I've worked with so far, um, as far as the creative branding and VR yeah. business, mm -hmm. um, I would say uh, Perry White LA, which is an amazing designer. He's a Vogue award-winning designer. Um, I do all of his social media and creative branding for his um, for his entire image of his brand. Um, we recently, actually, on this new collection that just got released a few days ago, Lust for Latex, we collaborated on... Go get that. Yeah, 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 go. go. And it's all under $75. Who can say they have an award-winning Vogue designer's pieces for under 75 bucks oh, man. you know what i mean it's affordable so, too. it's affordable yeah yeah so you have to get some we have men and women so that and then also katie albert she's an actress from um surfer dude uh soul plane things like that she's just been kind of a really great person to kind of vibe with and talk and she's she's like a sister yeah. you know like i have a sister but she's like that sister i never had right. so just like some really great people like right now i've, I've definitely been in that mindset where I don't want to work with anyone that causes me a lot of uh, grief yeah. or a lot of um, attitude. Like, I want to feel passionate about whatever I'm working on and the person I'm working with. So if you don't have that passion for yourself, I can't have that passion for you or your brand either. Absolutely. You know, so that's kind of what it's down to. And that ties into my next question. Because mm -hmm. I know everyone, all, they glorify the great things. But what are some ways that you overcome the struggles of being in the industry? Um, you know, honestly, the biggest struggle, I think, and I don't want to make it a color thing. Yeah. Well, it is Black but, History Month. Oh, yeah. We're in Black History Month. <laughs> but, you know, I think that's one of the biggest things, one of my biggest challenges have been so far with the business that I do. I have worked with, you know, big companies. I've worked with NBC Universal. I've worked with lots of different companies on projects. Yeah. And we've created amazing um, results. But I'm constantly, constantly competing against someone that may not be 
you know, my right. shade, right. it may not have as great as accolades as I do, but they still get work. Right. And they're getting constant work and they're getting big contract works and they just started a month ago. And it's mm. just, you know, so you par partially part of it is kind of you get into that mindset where like, dang, you know, it's industry a little right. colorist, a little ageist, a little all these different things. And so um I think that's been the biggest thing is I've always had to prove myself being a person of color, being a person that is younger, being a person of all these different things. You always have to prove yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to show up and you have to prove yourself 10 times more than the next person. Hey, and that's perseverance right there. Yeah, exactly. It definitely builds character. Mm -hmm. And you being a role model for everybody else too. Yeah. So what's one thing that you would say to an individual that was younger that's trying to, you know, get up there and find his way in the fashion industry? Um, whether it's fashion or business, yeah. I think... No matter what you're going to do, whether you're doing fashion, business, medical, um, if you want to be, a, like my mom always told me, no matter what you want to do in life, be the best at it. You oh, know, man. so if you want to go and be a burger flipper, be the best burger flipper there is. So that way, you're, yeah, exactly. That way you're being flown around the country for opportunities and work and you're the highly sought after one. It's mm -hmm. not about what you do, it's about how you do it and how you show up and, and do it. And so with that being said, I think every person that has a dream or a goal, the biggest thing is consistency. Yeah. Like a really wise person in my life once told me 75% of the job is showing up. You know, and there's a lot of people that get lots of opportunities, but they don't show up. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't show up, sometimes you, you'll get booked for a job or an opportunity because you're that person that show up. You may not even be the most talented person. Like I tell people all the time, there's a lot of people that are successful, yeah. but they're not the most talented people. You know, there's yeah. a lot of amazing singers that can outsing Beyonce, Aretha Franklin, everything else. But you know what? They don't have that confidence in themselves. Mm -hmm. Or they just don't show up and go after those opportunities. Absolutely. And it's the people that go after the opportunities and keep it consistent that actually make it somewhere. Oh, man, I appreciate that. Man, give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> that was... Those are keys. Is that, that, that key? DJ Khaled keys. Is that the key? That was the okay. key. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. so before we, get, you know, before we let out... To give us a way that we can get in contact with you. Do you have any yes. shows coming up or anything? Um, yeah, so right now I'm doing like a lot of um, a lot of projects right now where I'm kind of um, evolving myself into those projects too. So mm -hmm. um, I am adding Parker XL is, is more of just kind of like the independent. I'm still doing my brand consulting and brand building for other companies and clients and things like that. Yep. I'm really putting a lot more energy into my own brand. So yeah, yeah, Park, too, yeah. ParkerXL.com, you can check out like a lot of my lifestyle tips from fashion, beauty, um, to pretty much everything technology yeah. also advice like um even right now like i live in la and i'm back and forth in between minnesota for projects and stuff like that um i made a i got a project actually in a lift Ooh. i got a lift so in la we have a lift pool it's yeah. like a carpool i got a project that paid five thousand dollars and i met this guy in the back seat of a lift ride <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a two day project, mm -hmm. I, and and it's like stuff like that you can't even make up stuff like that people don't even think about. In L A, for example, we have so much time in traffic. Yeah. So you're in the car for 45 minutes. That's a great opportunity to to know someone. To get to and yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So for example, like in Minnesota, I'm pretty sure it's people who ride the trains, the bus, whatever it may be. Those are opportunities that you can have a chance to network with someone. Network, guys. Network, networking network. is key. So what's another way we can keep in contact yeah, with you? Yeah, so at Parker XL, that is P-A-R-K-E-R, -E XL, like extra large. And on my website, it's the same thing uh, for ParkerXL.com. Oh, lit, man. Just follow this guy, man. He's doing great things, and it's more to come. It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh gon' show up, get your shine on. It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on. Welcome back to Candy Fresh. We cannot go anywhere without a musician, an amazing power lady herself. She goes by the name of Lioness. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the Lioness. Give it up, give it up. I feel like every time I see her around town, I'm such a fangirl, but truly, it's an honor to have you. How you doing, my dear? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So we could, we could chat with you all night long, but I'm going to just ask you one or two quick questions and hand it out to Kalik. We had to share the love tonight, and uh, you, you're all over the place. I mean, you've got great music. You have bomb music videos. You've been on tour. Girl, what have you not done? But I, my question for you is, you have such powerful lyrics, you have such powerful just a being, especially when a music uh, songs are brought to life, but one of the biggest things that's really stood out to me is your advocacy for youth and anti-bullying. So if we can chat about that real quick, what does it mean to you to be a representative of other youth? 
Um, I speak from experience. I was bullied in school, so um, I know how hard it is to be bullied and, and to still go to school and have to face that, you know what I'm saying? So I wanted to speak against that because it's not okay, you know? We're all human, we all have, we all make mistakes, we all have different struggles that we go through, so to point the, the blame and the finger at someone else is not okay with me, so I'm gonna stand in the gap for that. That's amazing, so thank you so much for your work, and you're, you're educating, or you, you're, you're talking about powerful things to your, your songs, but what else can you do for our youth community? Maybe some advice or, or the work that you do with them? Yeah, I'm currently um, at uh, Hope Community Center. I'm working in the Teen Tech Center, and um, we have a program for the youth, teaching them how to make beats, teaching them how to record, um, Photoshop, 3D printing, all kind of things. So it's, it's great to be a part of that. That's amazing work. All right, I gotta give up my mic because Khalid's got some pressing questions, but keep doing that. That's amazing work. Man, that is amazing work. Y'all give it up a hand for it because a lot of people don't reach back when they're coming up. So. so I got some questions on the music side of things. So you're a rapper. Um, how did you get your start? What, what was, was music like a release for you from the bullying? Or what, how did that all come up? Like, how did you, you know... <laughs> <laughs> um, no, not from the bullying, but I had a, a musical background. My family, are, they're just, they love music. Okay. My mom, we would have to get up early Saturday mornings, clean up and all that. So she played gospel music. Oh. Uh, you know, my dad played jazz a lot. My brother, my oldest brother played the bass guitar and the trumpet. And my other brother played the drums and I sung in the choir. So it was just music all around. Y'all had a whole band. That's yeah, that, we was like the Jackson 5 in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's funny you mention that because as a kid when I was growing up, my mom would play the Jackson 5 movie and all of the family would get in line and sing the whole thing. Like, <laughs> That's what's that. So when you grew up, who was the Michael out of the out of the family? Would it be you? Oh man, I, it it probably was right. me. You know what I'm saying? I, <laughs> it was probably me. But um, but I would be nothing without them. So absolutely. So just giving honor and credit to them. You no, know, family is very very important. So what are some projects that you're working on right now? I'm working on an album that will drop in May. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Project mode. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Right, so what is your preparation for album? How do you get that tunnel vision and not get distracted? Do you like not listen to other people? How do you? A combination of things. Right now I'm not working. So I you know, I walked off my job, you know what I'm saying, quit. And um, I've just been putting my focus into the music and just being still and meditating and just diving right into it. Mm, that's a beautiful thing. A lot of people don't know how to take those leaps of faith into it, you know. Because if you keep holding back to that nine to five, it becomes a crutch almost. So talk about that. How does how did, did you like manage your schedule and still be an artist at the same time? It was difficult because the, the nine to five was draining me. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It was draining all my energy and I was giving them all of my time. You know what I'm saying? So I would put whatever was left, whatever energy I had left into mm -hmm. the music and I, that's not right, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I had to reverse it and take that time and take that energy and put it towards something that I love and that I'm passionate about versus something that you know, right. can, I can be replaced there, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So yeah. I like, I like that, I like that. Well, here you go. Yes, we gotta give it up to this lady. She is performing for us tonight, but before we let you take the stage, where can people find you and your work and your music? Um, the lioness music .com, um, Instagram, the lioness, Twitter, the lioness, Facebook, the lioness, the lioness. Because okay. you are the lioness. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the lioness.
We are so honored you have joined us today. We had an amazing audience. DJ Mickey Breeze on the ones and twos. Give it up, give it up. And we also got my man, Jonathan Bad Boy Gibson. We have an amazing lineup tonight. We appreciate you guys coming out. We got the Lioness. We got Parker XL. Who else we got? We had the love engineer herself, Alex Merritt, and the artist and muralist. You guys got to know Reggie LaFleur. Until next time, you are watching Candy Fresh.